All right, well, I transformed myself into a sprinkler helper. What section we're in here, let's see if I can get it up there. I became entrenched in landscaping works, the only thing I could get. I met a friend named Mike Bomer. This is in uh, Texas, Euless, Texas. Tried to, to work with other people. It's too lazy to do the work. I met Mike and Joan across the street where I was living behind a uh, couch. And I had to leave every day. And I did uh, anything I could do around the neighborhood. So I finally became, after doing a lot of landscaping work, a sprinkler helper. I had sold a sprinkler job, but uh, I couldn't do the work. So I farmed it out put in a bid for doing a sprinkler job. It included a lot of landscaping work topped off with a front yard sprinkler system. Wow. I took a little gamble because I had never done a sprinkler system. Don't think I could. We took the better side of judgment, discretion. We farmed this one out. Lucky thing. Laying the system out, the timer, what size PVC to use and where, not a good thing to tackle without experience. The uh, guy I farmed it out to used a ditch witch and a little knowledge that I didn't have. I worked with the guy, and he paid me $100 to finish digging the ditches. Couldn't do much harm there, and the job came out fine. Then I got a couple of trimming jobs, tree trimming. We got a pretty good at tree trimming. Good thing, too, so it's good money. Not much else to do in the certain seasons in Texas. When late summer came, the gardening work tailed off. It got too hot. We, we uh, bought a chainsaw to tackle bigger jobs. The noise scared me a bit. You had to get used to it. I never got used to uh, to the moving chain. It scared me a lot. I thought if I wasn't steady on the ladder either. When I was cutting, I had, I had to really stay focused so I didn't cut my leg off. Mike asked me one time, hey, you going to get off that branch before you cut all the way through it? I looked down. Yeah, I was cutting the branch that I was standing on in the tree. We were good at watching each other's backs that way, especially naive little me. Recognize your inability and go get some help. That's a little bit of wisdom there. After doing a number of trimming, trimming jobs, we pondered one job that had large limbs reaching over a roof. Our equipment was primitive. I cut off one small section at a time of this one big branch. It was twice the size of my waist as I stood on the roof. Only one huge branch section remained. It was the width of my waist. I tied the branch to the tree trunk above it and started cutting. I started cutting with a chainsaw. On the ground directly below, Mike stood looking up and hopeful. His reflection was clearly viewed in the big picture window below and next to the tree's huge trunk. With a crack, the huge branch swung directly down, missing the roof and the gutter by one quarter of an inch. The rope held. She bounced violently off the tree trunk. I shook a bit, it shook a bit and headed toward the picture window. Oh boy. Behind the window inside the house was a beautiful white sofa. Mike's reflection was overshadowed by the oncoming log. He stared in terror. That's all he could do. The branch was too big for him to tangle with. It kissed the window and swung back the other way. Mike's, Mike's reflection was kept intact in that window. The next swing was one inch away. Several minutes later, we were cutting it down and pulling it away from the house. I looked at Mike's relieved face and said with a big grin, just the way I planned it. Too big for my britches. Got to recognize that, and that usually happens every day. We took on one job where the tree trunk was nearly eight feet wide. The money was good. I couldn't put my arms around the tree enough to climb to the first limb. Even the branches were too large. There was no place to tie the ladder. Everything was huge. I climbed up the ladder to the first branch. The ladder slid off the tree and fell to the ground. I was alone up there, bear-hugging the tree, the tree trunk, with all fours. Too late to pick up the ladder and put it up, put it back up. Joan and Mike couldn't help but laugh as I yelped, sliding all the way down in a full-body bear hug on the tree trunk. The bark tore my shirt completely off, shredded my jeans a bit. Not too many scratches, but a lot of lost pride. I enjoyed their laughter, though. It must have looked funny. 
We hired Jose to do the job, a, a nearby neighbor of Mike's. He had experience and a younger body and a fearless but not foolish attitude. He looked real professional up there tackling those huge branches over the roof like a monkey. Glad we didn't lose money on the job, thanks to Jose. No more big trees for a while. Oh, my big toe. Mow and trim work became popular for us. One job I became popular myself with the customer. Or, she, or was she nearsighted? Everywhere I went, she was two inches behind me, supervising. Mike started laughing, and I was giving him serious glares. Whenever I turned around, the lady and I bumped noses, and Mike broke out laughing. Ma'am, I said to her, you need to move back a little. I didn't see you there. I said she acted concerned about every leaf I cut off a tree. So she distracted me so much that I jammed the stepladder right onto my big toe. I started hopping all around the yard till the pain went away. The woman actually hopped right along behind me. Mike went hysterical. We got all the lemonade and cookies we could handle, though. And we got the job, and we got paid, and we made some money. Can you fix this and this? A very attractive young mom called for lawn work every week. Then she started calling me regularly for fixing rusty locks, sticking doors, loose screws, and all sorts of trivial things I didn't have the heart to charge for her, charge her for. She even came to my church and I was impressed with the music, but she wasn't impressed with the message. I was just growing in my faith and I had learned one lesson that if a potential mate was not interested in your faith, then perhaps it's better to keep a distance until she is. Makes for a lot of years of loneliness, but you're not lonely with God. What's a best friend for? I was part of Mike's family. We confided in one another. Mike was interested in all my goings on in, at church. We quickly figured out what the theologian was, who the theologian was, he was. On the other hand, my enthusiasm attracted him. He had burned out on church a few years ago. So we discussed theological stuff, and I got an education from someone who had done his homework. I realized I came up short on a lot of what Mike said, so I began to study on my own. My girlfriend gave me a genuine Schofield NIV study Bible, so I had a good resource. Ironically, that very Bible was the source of our breaking up because a careful study of the Bible with those study helps made me realize that Patty's theology was not biblical, and it created a serious rift in our relationship. Our discussions led to Mike rejuvenating his faith and becoming a teacher and a leader at Bedford Baptist Temple, where he was awarded a doctorate degree. So he helped me and I helped him a whole lot. And John, Joan, his wife, couldn't be happier too. She has the heart of a teacher, so her job teaching the young children at Bed Bedford Baptist Temple completed her soul, especially since it is in a Christian setting. On the other hand, Mike led me to a very good Bible teaching church in Irving, where I started to build my faith on the doctrines of the Bible and not on emotional preaching, imaginary miracles, speaking in tongues, and claiming things that weren't yours. Chevy Caprice Dump Truck Well, I saved up enough money to get a deluxe, sun-faded, light blue four-door Chevy Caprice sedan with cruise control and five tires. The back seat was removed to make room for plants and branches. We now had a smooth-riding dump truck. On large trim jobs, we tied branches everywhere on, on the trunk, hood, sides, top, inside, passenger seats. Sometimes I'd forget to make a place for Mike and myself and tie the doors shut. So it was, we had to climb into the windows and hack your way into the seat. More than once I shifted a branch instead of the gears. She looked like a huge moving brush going down the road to the city dump. What's the traffic cop going to do? Give a bush speeding ticket? There's a bee there. I got pretty good at trying only one knot. So when we got to the dump, it didn't take long to release everything standing on the top of a mound of stinky garbage. <clears throat> one time a squall of rain came right overhead and blew a cloud of garbage over me like a, be like a blanket. I had to hose down a couple of times before coming into dinner at Mike's. The dump truck worked beautifully for a while till I turned on the cloaking device at a red light. The guy behind me drove right through the light like I wasn't there. I saw him coming in my rearview mirror. I stopped on the accelerator. We connected in the middle of the intersection. I had no personal injury, but the door, the car was totaled. I was covered all over with dirt. 
it looked like I flew through the windshield and rolled over and over on the ground. But that was just from the work job, the, at the job. The ambulance crew sure gave me a personal attention. They insisted I get to the stretcher and put on a neck brace. The truth of the matter was that I had just finished a landscaping job on a windy day. Lots of peat moss was used and the dust and dirt co coated my entire body. I was given immediate treatment in the emergency room, but I didn't have a scratch on me. I learned something. You want to get attention in the emergency room, rub dirt all over your body and if you want good treatment in that room. The insurance settlement afforded me an ancient beat-up truck with a defective shifter and a camper top. I donated the camper top to the church. It was well received. The church served its purpose, the truck served its purpose, and matched the decor of the city dump. Mike, Joanne, and I donated lots of plants and time to landscaping the grounds around the church. It's called Berean Memorial Church in Irving, Texas. We were especially proud of the job we did in the pastor's backyard. Joan had a flair for landscape de design. So we get to the fall time now in Texas. Late September in Texas, and the work drop, uh, dropped off a cliff. We took leaf raking jobs for pennies. We had all day to do one job in Arlington, so Mike and I decided not to let one leaf be found on the man's property. First things first, make a huge pile of leaves to dive into with his two boys. Then we got down to business of removing every leaf in sight. The man was astounded when he couldn't find a single leaf anywhere in his extensive yard. Oops! One floated down and I raced over to get it before it hit the ground. We got a dangerous tip that day. Leaf raking is good therapy. Oh, we got a generous tip that day. Leaf raking is good therapy. Yeah. Man the dental mirror. Clean those spots. Jerry took an instant liking to me. He was nevertheless a high-maintenance customer. He wanted us to do a lot of work on his house while his elder, elderly mom was still alive. He promised to let us landscape the yard after we finished the work on his house. So we were contact, contracted to paint the house inside and out, wallpaper the bathrooms, install new carpeting, kitchen flooring, and outdoor patio bricks. I lacked all the skills, so I farmed, farmed most of it out. Joan did the wall preparing, papering. I became a helper whenever I was needed and wherever I was needed. Jerry, the dentist uh, mirror guy, frequently shared his Catholic faith with me. I responded to him with what I was learning from my study of the source of faith we both had in common, the Bible. He quickly discovered that some of his views contradicted what I would show, could show him in the Bible and actually said differently. This seemed to unsettle him a bit. He seemed to cool down toward me, and he began to nitpick the work being done. He took a dental mirror inside the closets to see if the top of the molding was painted inside the closet. I cleaned up the dining room paneling of paint spots with liquid gold, but the spots were old and not even the color we painted from a past job and it was not our work. But he insisted on perfect corners on the kitchen floor molding despite imperfect walls. No plastic wood, he said, that was for amateurs. I cheated on this and painted the molding before he got home. Perfect, he said, you truly are a professional. I was fully convinced I was an amateur. He discovered a subtle pattern change in the patio bricks. At one time, I thought his complaints would never cease. His, his mom and I had many discussions. I felt an affinity for her, especially since I knew that her time was short. Jerry became very disturbed about my relationship with his mom and banned me from visiting the house. When the job was completed, I had some difficulty getting paid. After offering a credit for the patio pattern variance in the patio, Jerry put up his dental mirror and sent me a check. Needless to say, he did not call me back to do the landscaping work. Shortly thereafter, his mom passed away. I hope to heaven's shores, I told her about Jesus. And she got it and believed and got eternal life. Okay, the Mormons. Mike and I were approached by two Mormon disciples one day. I wasn't as well prepared to discuss theology with them. But Mike was. I learned a lot from him. I learned something that day that, that is so basic yet so often missed by people who profess to follow their religious precepts. If you want to find out what the Bible says or any book says, then let the words say what they mean. Read it. These Mormons were not prepared for a single passage that Mike so clearly repeated that was directly in contradiction to everything they held to. Yet it was right there in the Bible they professed to go 
go by alongside their Book of Mormon. Mike said, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. 